This is a quick follow-up to my last video on battery ROI. Hi, I'm Gary and welcome back to my channel, Gary Does Solar. I recently released a video on how to calculate the financial return on investment for a home battery as part of a solar installation. It was very well received and if you haven't seen it yet, I've put a link in the description. I did get some interesting comments though and I thought I'd address them here and at the same time provide further thoughts and insight on the topic of ROI that will hopefully be of help to you. There were a couple of comments saying, why do people always go on about ROI? You don't think about ROI when you're buying a car or a kitchen or a holiday. And you don't think about ROI when you're buying a gas boiler. So why are people so focused on ROI when buying a solar installation? They should be content they're doing their bit for the planet. Well, I'd argue that with everything you buy, there's a return on investment consideration. The car allows you to get to where you want to go efficiently and in style. A new kitchen enriches your daily living experience while increasing the value of your property. And a holiday provides a much needed break from work. It gives relaxation and quality time with the family. Even with a new gas boiler, there's a return on investment. It keeps your home warm and your water hot. So naturally, there's an ROI consideration when buying a solar and battery installation. It just might not be financial. Here are the three main reasons people might buy. Reduced carbon footprint. By harnessing solar energy, you are directly contributing to a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, which in turn helps combat climate change. Energy security. Having a battery allows for local storage of energy, and this provides continuity of supply in the event of any disruptions to the grid because of stormy weather or other reasons. And if you're in the fortunate position of having the funds available to buy a solar and battery installations for these two reasons, that's commendable. But for most people, I'd argue raising that kind of money is not an easy thing to do. And so consideration for the financial returns is not only important, but vital for making the case. And the great thing is, it doesn't have to be one or other of these reasons. All three work together. You can save the planet and save money at the same time. My focus in these videos will be all about the financial ROI, hopefully providing you with a good understanding of the factors involved so that you can make the best decisions. Okay, you remember from my previous video that the ROI on a battery depends as much on how you use your home battery as the price you paid for it. And we worked out a formula for the cost per kilowatt hour for using a home battery so you can see the actual cost of all the battery decisions you make. And that formula included a number of cycles per day as a parameter. I showed an example day with my own solar installation where the battery system completed one cycle. And I had it in my mind that it was like that every day until someone commented to say that their battery typically only cycled once every two to three days. So I looked more closely at my own data and sure enough, there were many days like this one where the battery only completed half a cycle. But that doesn't mean if you're only cycling half the time, your battery will last twice as long. It was also pointed out to me that you cannot avoid calendar aging of the battery. Even when the battery's not doing anything, it's still degrading, although not by as much. I'll probably look at a way of building this into the formula if anyone has any bright ideas, as I'm working on this at the moment in the Solarasma Pro utility. Here's a sneak preview of the new capability, which will be ready soon. And if you'd like to use Solar Asthma Pro, I put a link to my Patreon in the description. Finally, I've had some comments suggesting I should also include a cost per kilowatt hour for the solar panels as well as the battery. Essentially an amortization of the solar panels and the inverter over their lifetime. I take a different view though. Unlike with a battery where how hard you use it affects its lifetime, solar panels just do what they do. You don't have any control over the sunshine. It will be what it is wherever you live. And so the panels will likely last 25 years, whatever happens. And even with the cost per kilowatt hour we calculated for the battery, I don't think we should use this to calculate the ROI for the battery. Instead, I think this should just be used as guidance on how best to use the battery on a daily basis. For the ROI calculation for both the battery and the panels, I still recommend this approach I proposed in this video I made last year. Before I show you it, if you're getting a lot from my videos, please do take a second right now to click like and also subscribe as this really helps my channel get more reach. Thanks. So what we have here in this chart is time in years going along the bottom and cumulative cost on the y-axis. It's cumulative cost for a good reason as it shows visually when the break-even point is reached. If you didn't make any solar investment, we can show the cumulative cost of buying electricity as a straight line. That's not to say the price of electricity is increasing over time. That's just the nature of a cumulative chart. 
If the price of electricity should rise over time, the effect of that would be an increase in the slope of the line. OK, let's make our investment into solar. And on day one, you can see that the green line goes vertical to show the immediate cost of that investment. And even then, we'll still have to pay for any electricity we import, but hopefully we're importing a lot less, and therefore the green line has less of a slope. You can see that these two lines will eventually cross over time, and that point represents the break-even point, where the total amount of money you paid for your solar installation and imported electricity is the same as what you would have paid without an installation. In this example, that happens in just over eight years. What's even better than that is going forward, the area between the two lines is now pure savings, given that the installation is paid off. Now, it might be that after two years, we make a further investment, so another immediate vertical increase on the green line representing that extra investment. But we're expecting the slope of the green line to decrease going forward because of that investment. And as you can see here, it brings the break-even point forward by just under a year. And not only that, the savings per year after the break-even point increases as well. And it's worth noting that this kind of chart can accommodate changes in the price of electricity as well. For example, let's say four and a half years in, the price of electricity increases. This increases the slope of the orange line. And you can see the impact of this is to bring forward the break-even point once again. And this increases the savings thereafter even more. I can't think of a better way to track the ROI on a solar and battery installation as it captures the many changes that will happen over the years, including additional investments, ever-changing inflation, and changes to electricity prices. And it shows everything in a highly visual way. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section, though. And if many of you feel the same, I'll look at coding up a utility on my Patreon. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.